Two is for discipline, heedless of trial. Three, for the gleam of a jewel or a smile. What's up, peoples, and welcome or welcome back to another video and my first ever reading vlog. I'm very excited to get started. And for my first reading vlog, I have chosen Gideon the Ninth. I have been hearing about this book for about a year now. I've seen a lot of fan art for it on Instagram and I always thought the design looked really cool. And I recently finally figured out what the book was and I'm really excited to start reading. I will try to avoid major spoilers while talking about it. And if I am going to spoil anything, I'll give you a warning beforehand. So just me, my candle, which I lit specifically for this sort of ambiance and uh, let's get reading. In the myriadic year of our Lord, the 10,000th year of the King Undying, the kindly Prince of Death, Gideon Nav packed her sword, her shoes, and her dirty magazine, and she escaped from the House of the Ninth. Right off the bat, I like the way that it just throws you in immediately. There's no explanation about the world, there's no prologue, it's just you are in this world and things are happening. And that's always sort of how I've liked my world building done. I'm just thrown into it and I figure it out based on the characters versus some sort of exposition. And I think this is doing that really well. I'm already really interested in the world and I wanna learn more about it. And I'm only like a page and a half in. Thoughts on chapter one. I'm very interested. As I mentioned, very cool world. I've only read one chapter and I already want to know more about everything. I really like the voice. I feel like sometimes you'll read something and the voice is a little bit more modern and it feels off for the story. But I feel like even though this is like sort of medieval feeling so far, the setting, it's also very much science fiction. It's like my favorite fantasy and sci-fi in one thing. So even though the voice is very modern, it really fits and I'm really enjoying it. I feel like it's a pretty strong start for a book and I'm really excited to see where it goes. Four for fidelity facing ahead. Five for tradition and debts to the dead. Six for the truth over solace and lies. Seven for beauty that blossoms and dies. Eight for salvation no matter the cost. Nine for the tomb and for all that was lost. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see you there. I was just reading this really awesome book and got distracted. So, if you couldn't guess from that, I'm so far really enjoying Gideon the Ninth. I'm checking in with you all because I just finished part one and I've only been reading it for three days. So that seems like a good sign to me. I'm currently up to chapter 12 and ignore the scotch tape bookmark, but I'm making good progress. I was honestly expecting to like the book less than I am just because I haven't read a novel in a couple years at this point because I got into a really bad reading rut. And part of that was because I basically read Six of Crows, amazing book. If you ever want me to vlog a like reread of Six of Crows, let me know in the comments because I plan to reread it soon. One of my favorite series of all time. I read that book and I was like, this is amazing. And then I kept trying to find other books that I liked as much as Six of Crows. And every time that I didn't like it as much, I didn't finish it. I probably should have given them more time, but I was just really struggling to find a set of characters that I found as compelling as I had those six misfit outcasts. But Gideon the Ninth, while I don't love it as much as Six of Crows yet, is doing a pretty good job. A lot of times when I read books that have like more of the, let's just say, sunglasses on a skeleton face paint effect, the sort of modernism of like fantasy or science fiction, I don't like the voice. I find it almost like too witty or like it's trying to be too witty. And Gideon the Ninth definitely tries to be witty in that sort of modern sense. But I actually laugh at the jokes instead of cringe. So I'm really enjoying the voice of the novel and I'm really enjoying the characters, even though we've pretty much only gotten to know Gideon. The other characters come in and out and I've liked them all so far, but we haven't had a chance to really sit down and get to know them, get to know them. I'm invested in all of them. Even though Harrow so far has just been grouchy and sort of mean, I'm curious to see where her character goes. And I think that a part of this is just down to like, good writing, like I'm automatically just curious. 
which especially in a book where a lot of it is one character, I think that this is important because we're not seeing through the other character's eyes. We're not seeing the world outside of this one character's life. So being able to communicate things and peak curiosity and also to world build without it being like info dumpy is difficult. But I think that Gideon the Ninth has been doing a really good job with all of those things. I like Gideon. I'm interested to see where the other characters go. And the world is really cool to me so far. Like I sort of want a lore info dump so I can learn more about it. I sort of need to cosplay Gideon just to wear the sunglasses with that face paint. I know I've mentioned that multiple times in this vlog alone, but like, it looks really cool. I don't know. I was sort of making fun of it at first, but the more that I look at it, the more it grows on me and now I need to do it. So let me know if I should do a Gideon the Ninth cosplay. One of my 2024 resolutions was to actually get into cosplaying because I've always thought it would be cool. I play Dungeons and Dragons. I write and read sci-fi and fantasy books. I love Star Wars. You know, like all of these worlds that are sort of nerd interest worlds. I'm a huge Owl House, Dragon Prince, Avatar, all those sorts of like animated shows fan. So it just seemed natural for me to also be into cosplaying. And I've always been interested in it, but I've never actually done it. And this year I want to be Human Sprig and Amity. They're from Amphibia and the Owl House. And 2025 might be the year for Gideon, very likely. Wait, I just noticed this. Yes. Anyway, great book so far. You should read it. I'm excited for things to start really happening. There's gotta be some sort of trial-y, Hunger Games-y element that seems to be coming. I don't think it's actually in the Hunger Games, but I mean, they keep hinting in the story that not all of them will complete the trials and like they've got to start weeding people out at some point. And so I don't want anyone to leave because the moment that I was introduced to the wider cast of the other houses, I was like, I want to know all of your backstories and I want art of all of you because I need to know what you look like. I'm not a very visual person. When you describe a character to me, I don't really picture someone. That's whenever I'm friends with someone online, they're like, what do you think I look like behind the profile picture? I'm like, I legitimately think you look like Link. I have put no thought into it beyond that point. So without art, I really don't know what they look like. <laughs> Please somebody send me art of all the characters <laughs> from Gideon the Ninth. I sort of want to read the book now, so if you'll excuse me. I, uh, I have some work to do. What are you still doing here? You, you gotta go. I'm busy. You gotta go. Then the reverend daughter turned in a dramatic swish of black and disappeared into the flickering vestibule. This is what I've looked like every single morning for the past week. I wake up and I read this really awesome book. However, it's not the most aesthetic. And this vlog is supposed to be aesthetic, so let's fix that. There we go. Now that we are a little bit more aesthetic, we can get started. I have finished Gideon the Ninth, and you know that a book is good if a character from it ends up on my cosplay wish list. Three characters from this book ended up on my cosplay wish list. Gideon, Harrow, and the amazing Palamedes. I just love him to bits. Anyway, let's talk pros and cons of this book, and then I will get to my final rating. The pros are that it is incredibly well written and the character work is stunning. This book made me almost cry three times and it made me cry once. It's a really good book. The characters are what I wanna talk about though. The characters are really well thought out. They're really well written. Even the ones you don't like, you have to respect the character work that went into them. There is a very small cast in this book. There are the eight necromancers, their eight cavaliers and teacher. And honestly, I think that that is to its benefit. It gives the reader time to get attached to every single one of them, whether it's a positive attachment or a negative attachment. Every single one of them is amazingly well-crafted, well thought out. They have their own life going on, even when you don't see them. And I think that that's what really stuck with me about the book. A lot of the book is just Gideon walking around an empty palace until you get to the like middle of the book when I feel like it really picks up. I know that a lot of books 
have a great beginning, a great ending, and sort of like a saggy middle that nobody wants to look at. I feel like this book is honestly the opposite of that. The beginning is good. The ending is impactful, but the middle for me was where it shone. I just wanted to stay in that central bit where I was exploring all these characters. I was getting to know everybody. I was wrapped up in the mystery because that's another thing. About like maybe halfway-ish through the book, suddenly it's a mystery novel. I've never been much of like a whodunit kind of person. I don't usually care about that. This had such a whodunit element in the end, and I loved that about it. It was really, really good. My only problem with the entire book is that I didn't personally love who it ended up being, but that is literally my only problem, and it's such a minuscule problem, especially because there are three more books in this series, and I feel like who did it, I'm not gonna give anything away, but who did it will make more sense as the series continues. However, I did wanna talk a bit more about the like middle bit that I was talking about loving so much. And I think that this is because that's when the characters come into their own. The beginning is mostly Gideon. The ending is so action-packed that you're more caught up in the plot. Oh, and there's definitely crazy character moments. Like I said, it made me cry. Anyway, the middle was my favorite because it's when all the characters got to really shine. It's when they started to interact with each other the most. And the characters feel like they have lives beyond just this book. And that was really well done, in my opinion. I could read a whole book just to learn the detailed and convoluted relationship between Silas and Colum Ashed. I honestly would read that book because it's so fascinating. The world and the magic system especially that was created in this book, I would read the book just for that. So then when you throw in really great characters, a compelling plot, and like it's just, I just have no complaints. I had been in a really bad reading slump for like a couple years, honestly, and I was just not reading anything but comic books. So I was still reading but I hadn't read a novel in like years. And this has completely cured my reading slump. It's so good. It's just really well written. I'm definitely going to continue reading the series. I plan to get the next book, Harrow the Ninth, immediately and devour that one as quickly as I did this one. I will be excited to see if the sequel lives up to the first book. You might hear a bit about that on my Instagram stories and such. I doubt I'll be doing another full-length vlog about it, but if you want to stay up to date with my reading and what's going on, etc., you can follow me over on Instagram. I will put my tag up on the screen somewhere, but it's writing underscore with underscore ash. I've been posting a lot more of my stories over there. You get to get weekly updates about my writing progress, what I'm reading, just what's going on in my day. I also do, every couple weeks, I will do a Q&A about a specific writing topic. You know, like this week we're talking all about villains and I'm going to be answering villain-related questions on and off all week. So far I've gotten some really good ones. I absolutely love villains, so maybe that's why I'm having so much fun with this one. It's an amazing book. You should definitely read it. I would say that my final rating is nine out of nine skulls. But we'll turn that into five stars because that makes more sense. You need to read this book. Please read this book. And if you have read this book, let me know in the comments who your favorite character is besides Gideon and Harrow. I'm curious which house stuck with you the most. For me, the sixth house stole my heart. Palamedes and Camilla are amazing characters and they totally snuck up on me. Thank you for watching. Please read this book. I will put some videos up on the screen along with some bloopers. So if you wanna see those, stick around, click on a video, subscribe, and I will see you on the next page. Till then. Uh, don't get stuck, don't get stuck earrings, don't get stuck.